Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, we're going to be talking today about how to edit 360 VR footage in Premiere Pro CC 2017. The goal is to really just kind of show you the workflow and how to get started with this. We have a lot of 360 options out there and fairly inexpensive ones if you just kind of want to get started with 360. What comes along with that, of course, is <laughs> no standard. And by that, I simply mean that some footage will come pre-stitched right out of the camera when you after you finish shooting it. So for instance, Nikon Key Mission. It stitches it, you shoot it, you can just start editing. I'm also going to be showing some Samsung Gear 360, which is the camera that I have. Fantastic camera, shoots beautiful 4K. However, the footage is not stitched, which means that you have to use their own software. Now, there, there are other software options that you can use to stitch it, but what you need ultimately to begin editing inside of Premiere Pro CC 2017 um, is an equirectangular flavor of that 360 content. And uh, while I won't show it in today's stream, we'll do this on another one. There's another software uh, plugin called Metal, Metal Skybox, which you can use in both After Effects and Premiere. And that too can also do conversions to equirectangular or dual spherical, lots of different formats in 360. The one we're gonna focus on is equirectangular. That's what Premiere Pro wants to see. All right, so we're going to start here in Premiere Pro. And if I just go to my uh, bin here, and if I view these by text just for a moment, uh, once again, you'll see that I've got uh, some footage shot on the Nikon Key Mission. This was actually provided to me by one of our own users, Mr. Jared Hillhouse, might be joining us in the chat today. Hello, Jared. Thank you very much. So we've got some Nikon Key Mission. And again, these are exported out as .mp4, classic format, no issue there. Also, this is stuff that I shot myself on the Gear 360. Now, what's interesting, the Gear 360, it actually shoots, um, again, this is in 4K, it actually creates the unstitched media is actually exported in H.265. What? Yeah. Um, however, their proprietary software that does the conversion will spit out an H.264. You might think, well, oh, that's sort of going from, you know, lossy to lossy. It works somehow. And of course, H.265, a little bit higher quality, a little bit smaller file size, higher data rate. So it just somehow works. But that's their format. And then we've got some footage that you've probably seen in some of the demos that I've done over the last half a year or so provided to us. Um, I believe these are from Camp 4 Collective of this project called The Needles, which you can find, I believe, on the Jaunt website. Joint VR, Jaunt VR does a lot, of, a ton of stuff. Really one of the early adopters of this. They've done videos for Paul McCartney and just crazy things. This was shot totally high end. The, this footage that I have from them, this is like ProRes 444 um, and it's stereoscopic as well. So huge media, huge footage, 360 VR stereoscopic. So let's just start with the process of creating a sequence by default. And what you gotta do to actually set up the interface because if you just shoot 360 and you drag it into Premiere and you try and make a sequence, you're not, you're not gonna see 360 right away. So let's talk about that for a second. Okay, now the traditional way of course would be to go into something like the new item bin here and just make a new sequence. However, I'm gonna show you a slightly easier way, but there's a couple of things that you'll want to modify with regard to your program monitor and perhaps in the sequence settings. And I'll make you aware of where those are to ensure that you actually get the best beginning 360 editing experience. So I'm gonna take uh, this clip here Let's just go ahead and double click on this and bring this into the source monitor. So incidentally, if I just, if you take a look here, this is what um, a stitched, albeit um, sort of still sort of flattened looking 360 clip looks like. We can just kind of go full screen on this. Don't mind me in the corner there. This was actually a shot of me driving through the desert captured with the Samsung. You can actually see it right there. It was, uh, I had it <laughs> a little gorilla mounted on my, on the side of my door there. So when you bring the footage into Premiere, this is what it's going to look like. Now, the nice thing is we introduced a feature in the 2017 release called Auto-Aware VR. Essentially what that does is it automatically knows the attributes of that 360 content and builds the sequence for you based on those attributes. Now, if you wanna just verify what it was shot in, you can always go up to the preview area. I, I usually keep this um, minimized here. You can find this in the flyout menu right next to the project panel there. All right, and this will give you all of the attributes of the video in question. So you can see here, this is a true Ultra HD 4K 3840 2160 uh, pixel aspect ratio of 1.0. It's progressive, of course. It's shooting 2997 on that camera, 
48K audio, which people have asked me before, how's the audio on a lot of those cameras? You know, surprisingly, not too bad. It's kind of all self-contained, ready to roll. Now this was stitched in their own software, okay? Now I would show you that, but it's not ours, and that actually comes with the camera. And a lot of these cameras out there, sometimes they'll stitch it in camera dimension, others they'll come with a separate download, you download their software, and it does the stitching automatically and very quickly. What I can say about the Samsung stitching software is, it's really fast, it works brilliantly. Currently, at least as of a few months ago, it was Windows only. So I had to do the stitching on my Windows laptop and then bring those files into Premiere. So that was not the most ideal, but it works. And it works fast and it just really, it's wonderful. All right, so let's go ahead and right click on this and we're simply going to choose New Sequence From Clip. And when I do that, it's going to take the name of the associated clip here. You can see I've got a, a bunch of sequences already down in the timeline. All right. And there's my footage. Now, once again, now we're looking at it in the program monitor here and you're saying, okay, um, it looks exactly the same, right? Because there's a couple things we have to do before we can actually see the uh, 360 content and be able to kind of move around the sphere. So first thing you're going to need to do, first thing is you're going to need to add the 360 viewer button to the program monitor. Now you, you don't have to, and by the way, the button I'm talking about is this one here, toggle VR video display. Let me just move over so you can also see uh, the, uh, the tool tip. So you need to add this button. That T toggle VR video display button is not there by default. So let's go ahead and click on the plus sign here, which many of you may have never done before. It's the button editor. All right, and this contains all the various buttons, which at one point in Premiere's history, we used to display all of these inside the program monitor. So the button you want, now again, you're not seeing it here because I've already added it, is this one. Now, if there are buttons that you don't see or you're going, oh, that's where the loop playback button is or oh, that's where the global effects mute. I was just doing something recently. I had to show where that button is. To add them, you simply click and drag it down. And you see now that global effects mute has been added to my um, to the buttons in my program monitor. So. It's really easy, really simple. And by the way, you have separate uh, button editors for the source and program monitors, okay? So if you want it in both, you've got to add it to both. And that's by design. So we've added the button. So that's the first thing, all right? Now, just to get into some of the technical sides. Again, it's not just about I'm cutting right away. You need to make sure everything is set properly. Now, I mentioned auto-aware VR, something that we introduced in the at the beginning of the year and the update to Premiere Pro. But how do we actually see and verify attributes of these clips? Well, if we select the clip here in the time, or just uh, select the sequence, let's go up to the sequence menu for a second and just go into sequence settings. And I wanna show you where you can find that stuff. So here, in this case, if you look down, we've got this thing here, VR properties, and you'll see projection equirectangular. Now you don't have a lot of options here. We only work with equirectangular. It's either none or equirectangular. So if you do not have equirectangular footage, and I say that over and over because as I mentioned at the beginning, there's lots of different 360 formats, okay? We have currently standardized on equirectangular. But if you go into something like Metal Skybox Converter, you can convert to all different types. So that's the one that you'll wanna spit out that Premiere Pro can edit natively. Now you've got a couple of other options here for the horizontal captured view and vertical. Um, again, it will detect these automatically. Typically you'll see these at 360 degrees, 180. And then you have your layout. So for this particular video, it's shot 360, but this is monoscopic, right? So this is not stereoscopic. We don't need 3D glasses to see the 360, okay? Now I'm gonna show you at the end here a combination of 360 VR stereoscopic. And when that's the case, you'll see you have two different options. It's either over, under, or side by side. Now, if you've never done stereoscopic editing before, these are sort of very standard terms to relate to different types of how, or how, they, how the stereo footage was prepared and or shot. We're gonna be working with over, under here. We used to showcase a lot of side by side stuff in the early days, so um, pre-VR. So now that we've done that, now that we've verified sequence settings, now that we've added the VR viewer button, let's do it, right? So let's go ahead and turn this on. And right when you turn it on, you see the view changes because now what you have the ability to do is actually just click around inside the video and you're experiencing me in my car right there and exactly what the Samsung captured. Now, the other really cool thing about this, and we've shown this before, is that just like 
uninterrupted playback when using effects. You can turn effects on or off while working with um, working with uh, um, <laughs> what am I saying? You can turn effects on or off as you're playing the timeline. You can actually move through the sphere while you're playing back. Again, dependent on sort of how powerful your system is. So let's try this with OpenCL at quarter res playback. If I go ahead and start, I'm just going to mute this for a second. All right. See, I haven't even started driving yet. I'm getting, I'm getting ready. But you're, you're seeing it's, it's live. It's moving. Here, start, start moving, dude. Start driving. All right. There we go. And you're actually able to move through the sphere. The key here is that you don't have to have an Oculus setup to edit and test this. Not that you can't or shouldn't, by all means. The point is, Premiere Pro is handling all of this natively. And by the way, again, we're on a laptop. I'm broadcasting. I'm in one quarter res, which means that you see it looks a little pixelated there. But when I stop, zzz, sharpens up full resolution, right? I'm getting pretty amazing playback. And this is CC 2017. Look, we're not even dropping a single frame here. Um, 4K. And I'm not using proxies either. So this is not going to be the performance of every one system. I can also tell you very honestly that when I cut this original piece, you can find actually this video um, on my YouTube channel. When I cut this original piece, I was not getting that kind of playback. <laughs> so, you know, some days, some days you're hot and some days you're not. Why do computers slow down? Why, I don't know. They just do sometimes. If you want better performance, and let me just see here, Techno Gap. No, I'm not using proxies. And you know that because if you look at the proxy button, so this is another one of those. Oh, here, just I'll let you see the tooltip here. Toggle proxies. When it's gray, that means we are not using proxy files. So we are actually working off of the native media that was stitched from the camera, okay? Which in this case is MP4, which is H.264, which has to be decoded. So it's not even like smooth to begin with. And yet we're getting good performance. Yours may or may not be the same. We are also at quarter res and you'll see that because I'm working in 4K, I also have the option to go to even go down to cut at 1 8th resolution. Let's talk about making proxies because this is something you're likely going to want to do if you're working especially with 4K 360. I'm not saying you have to, I'm saying try it natively first, but if you want to use proxy files, once again, let's go up to our project settings here and we'll go up to ingest settings, okay? Inside project settings where we just were for the renderer. So again, we're using OpenCL, all your scratch disk stuff. This is the stuff that you see when you make a new project first thing in Premiere Pro. The last tab here is ingest settings, okay? So all you need to do, if you wanna work with content and have these lightweight, smaller, easier to playback files, Click the ingest box here. Now you see you've got a couple options. You can copy, transcode, create proxies. That's what you want. Or copy and create proxies. So you'd use copy and create proxies like if you're trying to take it off of a media card. For instance, Nikon Key Mission. The footage that is generated there is ready to edit. So if I want to simultaneously copy that media, the master native media, and create proxies, that's why I'd use that. Here, I've already taken all that media and copied it to a drive. So I don't need new copies. I just need the proxies made. So I choose create proxies. And then inside the menu here, now again, these will be a little bit different on Windows because you don't have a native Apple ProRes format to encode into or to transcode into. You're going to see uh, some H.264 presets, some GoPro Cineform presets in a variety of frame sizes that should equate to whatever the master frame size is that you're working in, right? So 1280-720 is the same aspect ratio as 1080p, 1920, uh, 1080, same aspect ratio as 3840-2160 or Ultra HD. So we're going to be focusing on these three here if I were to make proxies of this content. And again, I could use Apple ProRes 422, H.264. I would highly recommend GoPro Cineform um, for the simple fact that it's a native format in Premiere, both on Windows and Mac. It's optimized for playback, and the performance of them is great. If worst case, if you don't, if you want to, don't want to go Cineform, you can do H.264. Here's how easy this workflow is. So when you're cutting, now I don't, again, I don't have proxies attached to this, but when you're cutting, you turn on the proxy button, okay, and it goes blue. 
Now we're working with those 128720 proxies. They may look a little softer. Otherwise, by the way, you can watermark them too when you make your preset. And I, I typically recommend that. And I really only do them when I work in 4K anyway. Um, but when it's blue, you're working with proxies. Now to answer your question, uh, Khalid, does it lower the quality when you render? No, or blue spec asked that too. Because simply you uncheck that box. When it's gray, now you're seeing the media. There's no manual reconnecting. There's no reassigning or relinking the master footage. It knows. That's part of the very well-designed proxy creation system that the Premiere engineers did. That's not trying to sound salesy either, by the way. I realize that came out like, hey, try this mug. No, it's just well done. So you don't have to do any relinking. Additionally, if you had proxies already generated, all right, maybe you're using Avid too with Premiere. Maybe you're doing uh, Final Cut, whatever. And you've already made proxies of your footage. You can, at any point in time, select media in the project panel Right trick, or right, right trick, right click or control click. Oh, sorry, let me move up so you can see that. Go to the proxy menu, and you see from here you can create proxies. You can also attach third-party proxies. Maybe you made proxies in Prelude. Maybe you just made them in some other medium. Maybe you made them out of VLC because you were, uh, or Handbrake because you were making a bunch of dupes into some other format or something. Attach proxies. And also, if you were doing sort of offline online, here's where you can do kind of the older school reconnecting full res media. But if you make the proxy from within Premiere, you will not have to do that. And the only thing is when you go to render, just remember to click off that box. So now that we're here, now that we're inside of Premiere, two more things to show you. There's really nothing to tell you about the edit because the edit is exactly the same. If you grab, you know, if you start cutting around and moving things around, let's just do some random cuts here, all right? I'm doing this for the purpose of just showing you that it's exactly the same. Or if I go back here and I want to do uh, uh, a rolling edit, all right? So I'm clicking on the screen right inside the editor here and I can roll between these cuts, all right? Now I hadn't even adjusted them so we're actually seeing the exact same in and out point here. It functions exactly the same. If I wanted to do uh, a ripple, right? Okay, just using some keyboard shortcuts here. It all functions exactly the same. If I wanted to add a fade up from black, right? A typical sort of uh, transition, you can do that as well, okay? So it all functions exactly the same, which is something that I will typically do. So typically do like a little dissolve. And it's funny, last week on the stream, you know, we had Imagine Dragons editor, amazing guy, Matt Easton, spent three days with me in the studio. And I was asking him, I was saying like, oh, do you ever, uh... and by the way, I'm just editing while I'm talking just to show you that it's exactly the same. Okay, um, I said, oh, do you ever, um, you know, do you use like the uh, the film dissolve, you know, the uh, linear light dissolve? And he said, no, I just kind of go standard classic, classic cross dissolve. And you can see it's doing a little cross dissolve right there. If you look in the in the clouds, you can see it. All right. So all those kind of basic things work exactly the same. Similarly with color grading. So when you grade, you grade this just as if it were any other footage. All right, so the editing process, identical. Nothing changes. This is why this is so cool. But wait, there's more. Okay, so once again, um, just to kind of showcase here, and by the way, I just want to point something out really quickly. If we go back to the non-VR display, so here's, this is me walking in Amsterdam last September, and this was one of those things when you shoot 360, especially when you're out on the street, it can be very informative because when I turned on, if you just look at this still frame right here, so, you know, I'm gonna wind back just for a second. We're at a minute 13 and 20 seconds. Okay, all right, and look at that. Right now, for whatever reason, my computer's barfing a little bit. So let's go ahead and play back. And, you know, I'm walking past all of these people. And of course, again, we can kind of move around here. But this is what I wanted to show you. I'm gonna wind back. This is so funny, I love this. This is something that I didn't know until I shot the footage. So take a look, take a look at this woman here. It's really funny, you know, all these people as I'm walking down the street are kind of giving me these weird looks because I'm holding the 360 camera out here. So watch, look at her face. She's like, what, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> and that to me, you know, that, that to me is like the coolest thing about shooting content like this, which is, I mean, the virtual part of it is fine. I don't know if this makes you feel like you're in Amsterdam with me, but you just can reveal and see things 
that you never would have seen otherwise. So that's just a silly thing. I just wanted to kind of point that out. Now, again, some of the things, this is kind of funny. You know, this is <laughs> otherwise looks somewhat perfect, except that my nose is cut off. You know, this is an artifact from the stitch. And that's based on where I was kind of holding that camera. You can see very faintly here, that's where the stitch line is. Um, you know, so it just kind of depends on how you set this up. Again, I was holding it here. I've got the camera perched uh, on a rock here at one of the canals in Amsterdam. So the stitching was much nicer. There's less, you can actually see it right there if you take a good look, you know, right here. But it's almost perfect. I have found in shooting with this content that you are going to get better looking content, better looking stitching, if you're not holding the camera. Can you use blur in 360? Yes, you can. Now, again, for certain types of effects, I really recommend checking out, and I see Evil Cerise just posted the name there, I recommend checking out Metal Skybox. Um, Post-production on 360, and this is a good segue back into that, is a little bit different, especially again when you're working with text and light and sort of animating things in 360 space. And they've, they've just got a lot of great plugins that you can use in After Effects and Premiere that are just gonna work better and really conform to that spherical environment. It's not just sort of in front of you, it's all around you now. All right, so I just wanna segue real quickly back to this, uh, this Nikon key mission footage. Again, wanna thank Jared Hillhouse for lending that to me. So this is an example of um, some footage that he shot these cameras stitch it in camera. This is also 4K. Again, not using proxies here. I'm just going to mute that. All right. And this kind of gives you an idea. Again, really simple, really easy. Now that's interesting. Look at that. You can really see the stitch right there. Okay. So they're all going to have potentially, I mean, obviously maybe very, very expensive cameras won't. They're all going to have slight noticeable stitching areas at some point. I guess it also depends on the type of 360 camera it is. Um, Metal has a whole bunch of tutorials, however, on Vimeo that actually tell, teach you how to correct some of that. And actually this being sort of more of a, a tonal balance shift, you could actually do that pretty easily in After Effects and just um, neutralize the sky right there so that you don't see that stitching artifact. So it's not that terrible. Similarly, if you're doing, someone mentioned stabilization. Um, it involves using the After Effects tracker and it's a little trickery using the Metal Skybox plugin, but that's where you do, like you can't stabilize this using the classic stabilizer. It doesn't work that way because that stabilizer doesn't work in 360 space. Okay, um, one other thing too. So now, let's see, did you see this? Oh yeah, you already saw that. So again, that's the unstitched content. That's actually what the unstitched looks like just by turning on VR. And you see when you don't stitch it, you get these really weird artifacts. Um, but what I wanted to also show you is what it looks like just raw. So this is the footage via H.265, although it shows up here as .mp4, um, coming out of the Samsung gear. And again, that has those dual spherical lenses. So that's what it looks like if you were just to view it right off the camera. Like it creates files that you could play in Finder or play in VLC. That's what it's going to look like. And you can actually see, you can even play it in Premiere, all right? Now, to some degree, I was even thinking that's actually kind of cool in and of itself, but this is again flat. You're not working in that spherical space, okay? But now, let me show you two more things. First, we're going to talk about stereoscopic VR. So now this content, let me just go ahead and pull this up. I'm going to reveal in the project, just so once again I can show you here and then we'll close that preview. So again, this is 4K by 4K because this is stereo right? So it's, 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 it's showing up here square because it's a full 3840, 2160 for the left and a full 3840, 2160 for the right. Okay. So in this case at 60 frames per second, and this is also ProRes. So this footage is huge. This footage is also, um, is also flat. It's not been graded yet. So this is kind of a good segue into like grading the content as well. Now, in the case of this footage, let me just go back to those sequence settings for a moment. I'm going to select it here. This is where, you know, the only difference now is that you'll see, oh, and here, let me turn off the viewer to once again. So this is what we call uh, over under, right? Side by side would be just like that. It would be like this, over unders like this, two different formats for uh, creating your 
Stereo 360. And with Auto Aware VR, Premiere Pro already knew that it was stereoscopic over under. Okay, that's all tagged in the metadata of the file. Once again, though, I'll be honest, I pulled in a clip or two from some random 360 cameras. It didn't auto detect. So now you know where to find that and how to modify that. Now, there's another way to do it, too. In the flyout menu or the wrench menu or the settings menu, <laughs> which one is it? The settings menu inside of Premiere. Click on this. You'll see it says VR video. Notice you have enable. So that's the same as turning on the button. So again, theoretically, you don't need that 360 button, but it's just easier. Why go to a menu? It's like two, three clicks to get to enable. Does the same thing. Hide controls, what's that? Well, if you saw when we released 360 a year ago, you will want that hidden. The reason being, let's go ahead and enable this first. If we turn on those controls, so we'll show the controls, what it does is it gives you this viewer with handles on the left and right that basically work as you know, you're adjusting the degrees um, horizontally and vertically which is kind of nice, but the problem is now you're working in this fixed window size and it's just not, it's not very pretty, right? It just, that may seem dumb, but it's, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't make me want to edit. So I hide those. Now you're working in full screen. And again, it works the same way. Now, again, this is stereoscopic. So why are we not, this looks the same. It doesn't look stereo. Well, this is where you actually do have to change something in those settings, which is why I I, um, I pulled those out. Okay. Oh yeah, Techno, red 360. Can you imagine how much that's gonna cost? Not gonna be cheap. If we go into settings, here you will see that it has detected it as stereoscopic, so it doesn't even show, you know, mono or, it knows it's stereo. You can view the left, the right, or anaglyph. So this is going to allow you to, you know, test again, in 360, in real time, what this looks like. So if I had my red blue glasses, and I'm probably going to have to put this to one eighth res because this is this is heavy media here. Again, uh, no proxies on this at the moment. I'll go and play this back. Um, now I'd be able to move around. So not only am I in 360, but I'm in stereoscopic 360. Which, if you if you wrap your head around that for a second, oh, and by the way, you know we can go full screen on this if we want to, right? I mean, you can really, this is this is a fun way to kind of see what's happening and to cut around and, and move around. Um, it's really very cool. It's, I mean, it just, it just works. It just kind of works very simply right out of the box. If you have one of those external uh, um, Oculus setups, again, you could be, you could be testing this in the goggles. The point here is that you don't have to natively inside a Premiere, okay? So that's a little bit on, again, there's nothing different here. Oh, the one other thing I was gonna show you, let me go back to just, since this one happens to be flat, I just wanted to point out as far as grading goes, okay? Let me bounce over to my color workspace. So, oh, I've got a little GPU mess right there, okay. So once again, Lumetri color. Now, if you wanted to apply an input LUT to this, you could do that. I don't know what this was shot with, so I don't know how this is gonna look. Let me do like a Phantom Rec 709. No, that is absolutely not it. Okay, <laughs> let's not use any input LUTs. Um, having said that, we can use anything else in here. So if we just wanted to start with one of the creative LUTs, for instance, let's come down over here, Control down creative, and we can start clicking through. Now these are like some of those film stock emulations. Let's find one that I like here. Well, this is kind of nice, SL big. All right, just apply that or not. Maybe we don't love that one so much. Maybe instead I'll do my own temperature adjustment. And let's increase the contrast a bit. A little bit of saturation. Okay, maybe give this a little bit of a, a bit of an S-curve pop right here. Not too much right there. Last week on the live stream on Adobe Live, we had uh, the colorist from uh, Joe Talbot's film American Paradise, and he was saying how when he's using curves on the master in particular, he really tries to limit himself to the least amount of points as possible. And I thought that was really, I thought that was really good because I know I've gotten kind of lost in the weeds a few times and found myself, um, yeah, plotting, plotting too much. All right, so maybe we'll punch up a little bit more of the. Of the blues here 
And similarly, if we come down now, let's go into one of these, one of these film stock LUTs, all right, and add a little bit more vibrance, and maybe a little more saturation, and maybe add our highlight tints. Let's warm those up a little bit, okay? And again, play this back. And if I go into my effects controls, I'm playing this in 1 8 res, but you see, I can enable or disable Lumetri while it's playing, and it functions just like anything else. I mean, it's really <laughs> the footage. I'm not saying this is a great, a fantastic color correction or great or anything, but it really, it's really something. You know? And again, when you stop, oh, and you can see the stitch right there when I'm playing an eighth res, but it actually, it's quite smooth when you go back to, um, to full quality, okay? All the more reason to, again, always look at and modify your fractional playback settings because you'll see different things in all of those different views. Okay, so now we are ready to export. How the heck do we get this to YouTube and to Facebook so that it knows it's 360 and it works properly? File, export, media. All right. Now, again, you could create a GoPro Cineform file, a ProRes file. If you're going to be going to the web, you're going to want to create H.264 files, for which we've already created presets that you can use based on the frame size of your content. So let's go to H.264. When you go to H.264, you'll notice in the menu, and I know all of you have probably seen this already, of course we have a preset for Facebook, and some have asked before, why do you only have 720? That's what Facebook has standard on, standardized on, so Facebook only delivers 720p. You also have presets for YouTube. And I think Vimeo, did they just go 362? Like just? So we don't have that preset in here yet, although I guess it would technically work the same way. Um, so because I'm working in 4K, I would choose the YouTube 4K preset. Now everything can stay standard. You don't have to modify this preset at all. The only thing you have to do to ensure that this goes to YouTube or Facebook and can be viewed in 360, whether in a browser or on a, on a device, again, I'm just using the iPhone because that's what I have, It'll leverage the accelerometer and you can move around in 360. Under the video tab here, this is very important, scroll this all the way down and you will see that it too has the video is VR box. Now this should be checked based on auto aware. So it knows the sequence is VR. When you go to a, pre to a, a format that supports 360 output, this should automatically be checked and it should automatically know the frame layout. That's it. You can queue or export, upload it to YouTube, and you're done. Don't forget, you can also use your publish settings here. So if you wanted to publish this simultaneously to Facebook and YouTube, so that you don't have to do the upload, and you can see you can add your tags and description and whatever, you can do that here as well, okay? So just one more proof positive of that. Let's go to the stereo needles footage here. Okay, so this is stereoscopic 360. File, export, media. Okay, I want to deliver this to to, uh, let's go to Facebook this time, okay? Facebook 720. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Video is VR, stereoscopic, over, under. It automatically knows. That's the essence of auto-aware VR, all right? So my friends, that is how to edit 360 VR content, monoscopic and stereoscopic, inside of Premiere Pro CC 2017. It's easy. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye.